Welcome to the HR Chat Show, one of the world's most downloaded and shared podcasts designed for HR pros, talent execs, tech enthusiasts, and business leaders. For hundreds more episodes and what's new in the world of work, subscribe to the show, follow us on social media, and visit hrgazette.com. Welcome to another episode of the HR Chat Show. I'm your host today, Bill Bannum. Joining me on this episode is the awesome, wonderful, fabulous Rita Sukrit, Canada Learning Lead over at Hemsley Fraser. Rita is a globally experienced L&D leader, skilled in aligning business goals with L&D strategy. Rita helps companies implement innovative solutions using tech tools and frameworks. And she also combines the business acumen with portfolio skills to build trust, align stakeholders, tackle challenges, and inspire creativity for workplace learning. And uh, just to add to that, Rita's a really nice human being. Hey, Rita, welcome to the show today. Thank you, Bill. And what a nice intro. And thank you for that warm welcome. So, Rita, beyond that introduction, why don't you take a minute or two and introduce yourself to our listeners? Don't tell them too much about Hemsley Fraser just yet. We'll get into that shortly. Oh, of course. Let me tell you, you know, I've been in L&D for more than 25 years and of that, maybe 18 in consulting. I've worked in so many industries. I'm going to name a few because I want you to know that I've got the oil and gas, the chemical, professional services, financial and not-for-profit background that I bring. I've also worked across the globe in New Zealand, Australia, Europe, Saudi Arabia, US, the Caribbean, and Africa. So what I found is that with these experiences, it's really enriched my L&D competencies, which I now use to better align people, processes, best practices, and technology with corporate strategy. Okay, so let's talk a bit about Hemsley Fraser now then. Can you can you share the, the mission of Hemsley Fraser Group? Yes, I'd love to. Our mission is so simple, it's unbelievable. We really want to transform how people learn. We want to transform how they engage with each other and also how they develop in the workplace. And as you know, Bill, the workplace today is not just on site. It is hybrid and it is also remote. So really, we want to transform how people work today. Atlas is proud to be a supporter of the HR Chat Podcast. Our company enables innovative companies to compete in a global economy, believing that businesses should employ whomever they want wherever the talent exists. As the largest direct employer of record, Atlas is an expertise-enabled technology platform that delivers flexibility for companies to expand across borders, onboard talent, manage compliance, and pay their global workforce without the need for a local entity or multiple third-party providers. Learn more at atlashxm.com. That is pretty straightforward. Got it. Thank you very much. (laughs) So, um, uh, listeners of this show most of the listeners of this show around 65 percent of them are in wonderful north america um, the us and canada particularly and um they'll be aware that i have a funny accent because i'm originally (laughs) from the uk and hemsley fraser is a is a uk based organization Mm -hmm. um and uh, you're you're based out of toronto of course what what are the plans to expand in canada Mm -hmm. Well, I want to just preface that by saying, you know, Hemsley Fraser out of the UK has been around for about 32 years, and I'm so surprised they've taken this long to come into Canada, but we have been expanding here for just about a year and a half now, and what it's going to allow us to do is to really drive innovation and offer turnkey L&D solutions. When I say turnkey, I mean everything from needs assessment to evaluation of courseware. We partner with clients and consult with them to assess their learning and performance needs. It's that simple. Now, if I were to tell you, for me, we are a really a boutique L&D establishment. And what we do is we seek to understand the client's business objectives and partner with them to measure success because everything stems around the business objectives and the goals. We have to work backwards there when it comes to learning. As I mentioned, we're a turnkey um, boutique. We offer needs analysis. We do that very well. We offer instructional design and development, whether it's for face-to-face classroom, virtual, e-learning, gamification. We run the gamut. And we also support transfer of knowledge. We've seen a huge trend in this last year when people have gone through training and they go back to the job 
we want to ensure that they're actually applying those newfound skills and not going back to the old ways of doing things. And we also are strong when it comes to implementing evaluation methodologies. What I really like about us and what separates us, I find, is that our evaluation does not come at the end of training. It actually comes throughout from the very beginning with the needs analysis right through each and every step, right down to the end of the training and then post training. I wanna highlight a couple of our services, if that's okay. Some of the areas we're really excelling is leadership development, change management, L&D strategy. And as you know, in the last couple of years, diversity, equity, and inclusion have been very, very much on everyone's agenda. And Hemsey Fraser's added belonging to that portfolio, D-E-I-N-B. This episode of the HR Chat Podcast is sponsored by Access Perks, America's largest and HR-friendliest employee discount program. At Access Perks, we help workers stretch their paychecks by hundreds, even thousands of dollars on food, clothing, auto repair, travel, family fun, and a lot more. With over a million providers to choose from, no other employee discount program comes close to delivering more savings in more communities throughout America. Request your free trial membership today at accessperks.com slash HR chat. That's accessperks.com slash HR chat. I understand that users can choose from the Hemsley Fraser Library's range of topics and content types, including fluid books, videos, animations, podcasts, three, infographics and quizzes, as well as virtual training in person or bite size sessions uh, so you guys do it all uh, depending on the industry and or job type do you do some forms of learning content work better than others in your experience yes yeah i want i'll just backtrack a little bit our our library as you call it i like that term but in-house we refer to it as a digital hub and you're absolutely right it's rich with content and definitely a resource for training for me I think when it comes to certain type of training that drives the model, the, the way it's conducted, it's definitely mandatory training like health and safety, compliance and cybersecurity. These training to me are best done in person. I feel they consist of so many scenarios. It's just endless in some cases, especially with health and safety. And then the facilitator and the learner are truly interacting with each other consistently and continuously there are tons of group activities and especially the collaborative decision making it's kind of like the testing mechanism to make sure they've got the concepts and they know how to work in compliance and i really think those courseware are best done in person but given that some companies are still transitioning to a digital workplace micro learning to me is still very very much in demand and designing for the five moments of need. So I'm just gonna quickly run through what they are. The first one is learning something for the first time. The second is wanting to learn more. The third one is of course, applying or remembering, trying to remember something. Four is when something goes wrong. And five is when something changes. The first two, wanting to learn something for the first time and additional information is where formal training kicks in. That's the full, robust, comprehensive training solution. But the latter three, are where we apply job aids, performance support mechanism, and this helps transfer that knowledge. We talked about going back to the job and applying those newfound skills. So leaders and executives, Rita, must be able to develop and fine tune their team's workplace skills, of course, to ensure resilience during, frankly, another tough year ahead, i.e. a slowing economy, the Ukraine war, lasting effects of COVID. In your opinion, how can employee development frameworks help leaders to adapt to this changing marketplace and business environment? Yeah, that's really good. Um, I want to start off by saying, you know, good companies really prioritize their people and and CEOs do care about their workforce. I was looking up some, because we are a global company and it dawned on me like the top 50 companies in the world all have a chief learning officer. That's really, that's, that's moving to me. I like that concept. But before we even get to employee development framework, 
the leaders need to change themselves. We have seen last year in 2022, the spend for leadership development has started to increase. And I truly believe it's going to continue in 2023. But here's what I believe we need leadership. We need them to create psychological safety for employees so employees can take calculated risk and be their authentic self. I think leaders also need to listen and empathize so that they can really support and guide their employees. And finally, I feel like they, to bounce back, as you mentioned, with the war and everything that's happening and withstand and grow the business despite all these downturns, that means acquiring new skills and competencies. Um, CEOs are, for, for, for us, what we're seeing is challenged with three items, the leadership and the manager effectiveness, which is why the spend, I believe, is going to increase. And then the organizational design and change management, where some companies are still transforming and going through digitization. So change is going to continue. There's no end to change. That's how we grow. And the employee experience, you might laugh when I say this, but I really think this is the year of the employee. And this may be the first generation that's going to fire their employer. This ties into having that employee development framework for growth. Do you remember the days when we would select a handful of people and develop them? They were called high potentials. Well, now everyone in your organization are high potentials. We need to invest and develop them. Thanks for tuning in to the HR Chat Podcast. If you're enjoying this episode, we'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe and leave a five-star review on your podcast platform of choice. And now, back to the conversation. Rita, considerations for wellness and mental health are a big priority for many, if not most organizations, uh, partly for the reasons that we just mentioned a moment ago in terms of what's going on in this crazy world right now. Mm-hmm. How, how do these <clears throat> how, how do these considerations impact learning efficiency? Mm-hmm. That's a really good question. And it's such a timely topic, too. You know, shockingly, 15.8 percent of U.S. Uh, employees have take take regular medication for depression or, or and or anxiety. I myself have had to take some sanity days in the last year or so. But the pandemic followed by inflation, the war that you mentioned, and of course the, the slow recession that we're experiencing has taken its toll on all of us. When it comes to mental health, there are really two areas. We've talked about the individual, but we haven't considered the organization. We all know that individuals need, they have needs, they have aspirations, they also have fears. When they feel safe, they aspire for growth, meaning, and higher purpose. Everyone has that, it's Maslow's hierarchy. But when they feel threatened, whether at home or in the job, that's when things go sideways. They slow down, they quiet, quit, all these things we've been, all these trends we've been hearing about. But think about it, right? Organizations, too, have their own induced stress with startups. And we've experienced this in the last year and a half, growth, layoffs. When we combine these two for the individual and the organization stress, this really can affect the performance and where things really start to go downhill. For me, as business leaders, I think we need to think about mental health as a strategy to grow and to innovate and adapt. We also want to ask employees how they are doing and give them a sense of safety. We want them, we want to allow them to come up with ideas for reinvention and growth. And I think this is going to be the big trend going forward this year, bringing the employee into the solution that we seek. And that's really inclusion and the shift to a human leadership model. Fidelo Inc. is a consulting firm specializing in improving human performance and we're proud to support the HR Chat Podcast. We help identify strategic competencies and behaviors that drive results. Our team offers an HR web software to manage systems, reports, and data for HR people that need the best insights to make the right decisions and achieve better results. Learn more at Fidelo.com. Okay, so you touched upon this a little while ago, Rita, Mm -hmm. but um, uh, the fact is remote learning is a top adjustment for trainers and learners this year and there's never been a better time for learning and development to be at the forefront and collaborate with organizations to champion for a brighter future gosh we need a brighter future right now um hr.com 
uh, research states that 46% of L&D pros say micro learning will become the standard for businesses and 30% say augmented and virtual reality will play a growing role. Um, at the moment, it's kind of prohibitive in the costs for the VR visors and such, but hopefully they'll get cheaper. And 59% think more learning will occur on mobile devices. That makes a lot of sense to me. Additionally, according to the State of Learning report, 66% of learning will become more personalized, 58% measurable, and 51% career focused. Nonetheless, we have to address growing uncertainty, Rita. LD is actively seeking ways to improve and sustain digital learning efforts. So my question for you is, Hemsley Fraser has identified major trends that can support organizations around this. Can you tell us more, please? Mm -hmm. I mean, those stats are staggering, aren't they? I mean, they're really interesting. And what I really like about what you've done is you've shared both the stats for HR and for L&D. Collaboration is key when it comes to these functions, but we also have to include the business units they're going to be critical in improving and sustaining learning going forward. At Hemsley, what some of the trends we're seeing, these are the top three. There's the first one is learning. We need to see more of that in organizations. The culture, the learning has to be embedded in the culture. Let's face it, learning is a skill. And when culture and learning are aligned, they really reinforce each other for employee and company growth. You can't have one without the other. They do go hand in hand. Secondly, we want to see upskilling for workforce agility. And that means, you know, okay, finding the right talent is definitely costly, but it can be done. And companies that have prioritized innovations have proven to outperform others in the market. So what we have to do is learn how to embrace these disruptions and learn the skills so that we are adaptable and can move and fluidly through these unprecedented changes. That means, yes, reskilling, upskilling, new skilling for continuous development. Third is when we offer training, we can't do a one format only. It can't just be, you know, classroom. It can't just be e-learning. It can't just be one format. It has to be multimodal. 77% um, of the global workforce they want to learn new skills or even be completely retrained. So designing the right modality is absolutely critical in this realm. Um, I want to just go a little further into some of the things you talked about, AR and, and VR. There's also mixed reality is blending the two because cost is still quite high for these areas. But the one thing I feel Hemsley Fraser does well is personalized learning. We we refer to this as adaptive learning. The learner knows, you know, the, the, the tool is designed so that it assesses the learner to, to determine what they already know and what they need to know. And this is done through a series of questions at the very beginning of the course. And the algorithm, which is the AI algorithm, actually pinpoints where they think the learner's level are and recommends the learning path. That's really, really super cool. This is based on data and very innovative. The last thing is, of course, blended and in-person learning are preferred, but I feel like managers need to come in and guide their employees towards the best modality. You know that there are preferences that people have for learning. Myself, I'm a visual learner. I like to see things and see how it's done. So managers have to sit down with each of their employees and map out a customized learning path with short-term goals, with long-term goals, and the opportunity to practice these new skills that they're going to learn in this journey. Mm -hmm. You know what else is super cool, Rita? You, you're super cool. <laughs> um, okay, two more questions for you before we do wrap up for today. Uh, let's talk about legacy and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, legacy and third-party content. In, in your opinion, uh, in your experience, how, how does Hemley Fraser Group help transform clients' old training programs so that mm -hmm. they are fit for the future? I love yeah. that you guys do this. Tell us more. Yes. And Bill, you're going to be shocked to know how many organizations are still using legacy uh, courseware and think it's it's serving the purpose. And we see this with government institutions, crown corporations, and 
honestly, we it, it's a push to get them to shift. The top challenge is the lack of L&D funds. We get it. We understand. We are the first area to go when it comes to you know, cutting funds. And that means seeking out creative ways to redesign these content at low cost and with high impact on the employee development. Try to put that together. Now, it's really, it's a difficult task. And if you're still operating in, in legacy systems, it's unlikely you could articulate this and execute it. Um, so as budget gets cut, training seems to fall with HR and they need to now show the effectiveness of existing programs. That's not an easy feat. So what we are doing at a very high level is recommending evaluating the organizational needs and their business results. So we always start with that in mind and work backwards. So once we have that in tow, we then try to figure out what the learner needs are. As we can see through the years, a job that a person was doing maybe three years ago has evolved in the last two or three years and maybe even continuing to evolve today. So we need to really define what their needs are. And I'm going to say this a bit cheekily, but you want to partner with a good vendor, you know, someone like a Hemsley Fraser Canada, let's say, I just pull that off the top of my head. But what we do with the client is we really look at everything in their portfolio and see what's relevant and what's not. We need them to guide us with this. We're not going to make those determinations because it has to be based on the business objectives. Then we decide what's what we selected, what requires a new design. So we all know flash courses are not going to work, haven't worked since 2019 with the systems we have now. Everything is SCORM or XAPI compliant. That's a dead given. Then we want to re decide what content can be updated, if at all. You know, maybe it contains, maybe it needs a complete new redesign. And then what assets are available? And assets in learning are your videos, your graphics, your voiceovers, all these fun things that make learning engaging and interactive. And then here's where, you know, the cost and the high impact comes in. What do we design? What's going to be micro learning? What's going to be gamification? What's going to be job aids? And that's where, you know, we sit down and we figure out what our priorities, first, second, and tertiary. And then, of course, we want to test these new costs we're designed with the client and then finally integrate it in technology. Keeping in mind, technology is not going to solve everything right up front. It does take time. Okay, thank you, Rita. One last question for you. This one shouldn't be too much of a doozy, I hope. Uh, and that is, how can our listeners connect with you? So maybe you want to share your LinkedIn details, your email address, etc. And also, of course, how can they learn more about all the cool things happening mm -hmm. over at Hemsley Fraser Group? Of course. You can, of course, find me on LinkedIn at um, Rita Sucret or contact me at rita.sucret at hemsleyfraser.ca. And I encourage you and invite you to visit our website, hemsleyfraser.com. Perfect. Well, that just leaves me to say for today, Rita, I always enjoy chatting with you. Thank you very much for being my guest on this episode of the HR Chat Show. Uh, thank you, Bill. It was a pleasure. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And listeners, as always, until next time, happy working. Thanks for listening to the HR Chat Show. If you enjoyed this episode, why not subscribe and listen to some of the hundreds of episodes published by HR Gazette. And remember, for what's new in the world of work, subscribe to the show, follow us on social media, and visit hrgazette.com.